Welcome to Time Valley Motorhomes, I'm Callum and this is the external handover on a Auto Trail Expedition 67. So as we start the walk round on the driver's side of the motorhome first, the first point you get to is your mains connection point. So whether you're charging your vehicle at home or you are just arrived on site to charge as you're on hookup, this is how you hook your vehicle up. So you get a hookup lead with the vehicle, lift the collar and you want to hook the van up. Then hook the sight and do it in reverse order when unhooking. So this avoids carrying a live lead should the lead ever become damaged or the weather conditions outside not be great. You don't want to be carrying a live lead in your hand. When unhooking, if you do it the opposite way, so always unhook the sight, then the vehicle lasts. But when you unhook the vehicle, there's a little blue clip here that you need to push down to safely remove the hookup lead. As the boiler on this vehicle is a condensing boiler, this will weep, so this just allows a little bit of water out from time to time. That isn't a fault, that's just on all wheel boilers, as one's an intake and one just allows the condensation that's in the van out through the boiler system. Fresh water drain, so if you've taken on a source of contaminated water or you are um, draining it down for the winter, you're just not using it for a couple of weeks, you can open the fresh. And then the grey one is your dirty water. So this is anything that you've put down a plug hole. On the way out of your site, there's normally a designated pot, point on the site where you'd arrive over and you'll just open and drain off your dirty water. You can leave this open a jar when traveling home and it'll rock any loose water out of the vehicle. But make sure these are fully drained off in the winter to avoid frost damage because frost damage isn't covered under any sort of warranty it's your responsibility to drain the vehicle free of water in the winter. Coming back here, we've got your intake for your heating and hot water system, which is wheel. Using your keys, you've got a habitation key, which is this one here. And this opens these locks. So open the cassette locker. So push them both in, you'll be able to drop the door and you've got your cassette. So to fit for the cassette, you'd lift the blue clip up and be able to slide the cassette out of the van. Lift the handle if it's too heavy so you can drag it to your disposal point, which is normally beside your toilet block on site. And then to empty, it's dead easy. You just remove the blue cap, pop that to one side, press the blue button at the back and pour the contents of the cassette out. This is just water where we've tested your toilet with. So you get rid of all your liquid in your cassette. Once you've done that, there is normally a tap there. So put some water in, give it a rinse, tip out again before going in with a cap full of chemicals. So it's 120 mil this cap capacity. You can fill that and tip it into there or you can just tip about 120 mil of either blue or green tablets, um, chemical, sorry, into here. If you were to use the tablets, you just need to make sure that you've got a pint of water in the cassette. So a pint of water, you can either push it in bone dry and flush a pint of water into the cassette, or you can put a pint of water in before you put the cassette back into the van and then drop a tablet down the toilet by opening the blade in the cellophane wrapper and that'll break down into the liquid. They're just a little bit easier to store on a van this size instead of big, big uh, jugs. At the back of the van, opening the barn doors on the back, you've got your gas locker. So your gas locker opens with this South Core key. As it's a sealed gas compartment, so that goes on there and you're able to open this. The gas that this vehicle takes is a camping gas bottle, which is a 907 cylinder. And to connect a 907 cylinder, it's a, it's a screw-on fitting. So what you do is you take the stopper off the top of the bottle, pop this on the bottle, and you want to spin the bottle round until it breaks the seal on the bottle. You'll smell gas, and this will tighten up onto the bottle, and that is your bottle connected. You can turn the cylinder on and off via the red stopper, so you just when it's when you can't turn it anymore it's off when you can turn it it's on and once you've turned it on if you press the 
black button in, which is a crash valve, it'll allow the gas into the motorhome. This just is a crash sensing device, so if you were involved in a collision, it will just cut the gas off. And always make sure that your bottle is securely tied in and you've got space for two bottles on board in this vehicle. And then once you've put your bottle on, always lock your gas compartment cage so it's, it forms a seal. A gas tight seal on there and that is good to go. Making sure that you do turn it off every time before you travel so it's safer for you and other road users. As we come down the passenger side of the vehicle, you've got your fridge vents and these have got the covers on here. So you can remove the covers in the summer months. In the winter, you may have to put them on if it's really cold. I think if it's below, if it's above something like four degrees, I've got to come off. But if it's below that, you can put your covers on. But make sure you take them off in the summer, otherwise the fridge won't work because it can't cool itself down because that's being blocked. Using the habitation key as well here, this is your fresh water fill up point. So carry a hose pipe and some hose pipe fittings as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. So you'll need a couple of fittings because some taps on site are slightly different. And always put the flat end of the hose in the van so it's lockable. Push it in when it's open and you'll be able to remove the cap. Flat end of the hose in here and wait until it either overflows or until you look on your control panel and you, you know how much water you've got on board. And once you've got enough, you can just turn it off or you can leave it all overflow and it's fully topped the tank up. At the passenger door, using the main ignition key, which is your Fiat Decato key, you can use this to access your diesel filling point. So you've got a lockable diesel cap on there, so you can open that with the main key. And below, because it's a new Euro 6D compliant engine, it does take add blue. So this cleans your, the soot out your exhaust system at a certain temperature and it uses 19 litres of liquid. So that's how much capacity the add blue tank takes. And it will illuminate on the dash when it needs it. So it'll tell you on the dash when it needs add blue. And you can simply either buy it in the drums in 5 or 10 litre capacities or you can buy it on the pump now and top it up. But it'll do a full five and a half thousand mile on a full 19 litres so it might just be a thing you do once a year depending on how many miles you're going to cover but when it does come on if you do just top it up and it will give you a warning after you've covered four and a half thousand mile and you've got a thousand mile left the light will come on just to say add blue low and you can top it up tyre pressures here so five and a half bar which is 79.5 psi Toolkit underneath the passenger seat, which includes a jack and a brace and a tornai. Engine battery for the main van is underneath this compartment here, so it lives underneath the cab floor. It's not underneath the bonnet, but the bonnet release is on the side of the dashboard. Underneath the dash, you've got various fluids, but with it being on the new Series 8 Decato, it doesn't have power steering fluid, it's an electronic steering rack and it doesn't have a dipstick. You can view your oil level through the dashboard. So, but it does have your screen wash. Lift this cover off with the three tabs and you can have fill your coolant. And then next to it you've got your brake fluid. Your oil filler on the top there for filling it. Paint codes on this sticker should you ever need it. Weight plates on this sticker, three and a half ton. Six ton train weight, so if you do plan to put a tow bar on one of these vehicles, you can pull some weight behind the van. Earth and point for giving or receiving a jump start, and then air intake next to it. Put your key here or your screwdriver and lift this cover up. And you've got a positive terminal for giving or receiving a jump start.